All right, we are live. 7 7 22, July 7th. How is everybody doing? I got I have all 10 of my digits here, so proof I did, <laughs> didn't do anything stupid. <laughs> you, you mean you didn't light up Huntington Beach? Oh. <laughs> I let other people like the stuff now. <laughs> uh, uh, before you continue, sir. Yes. Every time that we come to July 4th, I have two great memories from you. <laughs> the first one was the story you related about people on the beach. And after the fireworks at the beach went off, then yours went off. And somebody at the beach says, oh, that's Limbo Land. <laughs> and they go, what? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, at first they said, oh, that must be Disneyland. And then my buddy said, no, that's Limbo Land. <laughs> the other one that I relate to is when you invited me to your 4th of July celebration and you lit up the street tremendously. <laughs> and I, I am so, so honored in, in having connection to those stories. So thank you. Every July 4th, that's what I, that's what I see. That's what I, I enjoy. Well, this, I got to tell you, I, I love lighting the sky up, but this year was a little, this was an off year. <clears throat> I usually go down and uh, pick up a pretty good supply of that stuff in about April, May. And this year I just didn't get around to it. So it was a very light year that I think uh, the neighbors were fairly disappointed, <laughs> as was I. <laughs> But next year, uh, I have to come back with a vengeance. So next year, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll plan something and light the sky. We'll paint the sky again. <laughs> but pretty, pretty cool stuff. I know last week we discussed how, how I basically sell the, the site pop service, overcoming the whole thing about SEO. When you're, when you're selling a service or product and it's a good product or a good service, but a lot of people have a bad idea about it, it can be tough, you know, and there's, there's a lot of different industries like that, you know, like for instance, there's, there's a lot of health industries where there might be a good health product that would really help someone be cured or, or fixed or whatever, um, but there's so much misconception about it, you know, like maybe somebody knows somebody that had that same thing and died of it. And they believe that that doesn't work. They believe you get that. You're just going to die. <clears throat> so what's the point? And, uh, that is, that comes down to a belief system. And this goes back to the whole idea of every objection is formed on a belief. It's a belief that it doesn't work. It's a belief against you making a sale, but no matter what it is. Um, we all have it. Everything that we all sell, there are objections. And every one of those objections is based on a belief. The belief most likely is formed by either miscommunication or just not being educated on it. You know, there's a lot of stuff that we just don't know. You know, especially when, when we're selling something to somebody and they're not educated on it, which in a lot of cases they won't be. There's, there's misunderstandings there because they're not educated on it. Like most people don't know SEO. So you go and sell them SEO and they have this preconceived idea of, oh, well, I know somebody that got banned from that. Oh, I know somebody, I tried that. It didn't work. So you've got all these objections. They don't know why it didn't work because they're not educated on it. They don't know why the other guy got banned because they're not educated on it. So our job as marketers is to create edu education-based marketing. So we can educate them. We can eliminate those objections because if we don't, we're not going to get any sales. I can almost guarantee you, you are not going to sell something to somebody that has an objection to purchasing it. It's just not going to happen. You can ask for the order all day long 
and they're just going to continuously say no thanks or no or or they'll they'll do what's even worse is they'll they'll lead you on making you think that they're going to buy it but they're really not <laughs> and they'll waste your time so it's important that when you get to a to a point and this is this is really difficult to do in the digital world because we don't have the advantage of standing in front of them and asking them and seeing their reaction. So we have to anticipate it. And this is where a follow-up sequence can really save your bacon. If you don't have a follow-up sequence and your marketing campaign gets to the point of a no and they bug out, it's generally game over unless you have a follow-up sequence. The follow-up sequence is basically, that's a replication of you getting their, their whatever, their reaction to the offer and being able to counter that reaction. So it, it would be like in the real world, if you made an offer and the person said no, and you said, okay, and you just tucked your head between your legs and walked away. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the equivalent. So if you don't have a follow-up, that's what you're doing. That doesn't work very well. You know, it's just like I always say, what works in the real world works online. You just have to figure out how you're going to replicate it. If it works out there, we can make it work in here. We just have to figure out how to replicate it. So like I, I learned this from Eric Lawholm long, long time ago. He I was not a sales guy. I I just, people wanted to buy things from me because of the way I would explain them, but I didn't have any sales training. I didn't know what I was doing. I just did it well. <laughs> it was just, you know, whatever, luck, whatever you want to call it. Um, I, I was always very authoritative when I was speaking on something. And people gravitated toward that. And I had no problem getting people to buy stuff from me. But when it, when it came to the point of, okay, hey, I want to make a sale. I was stuck. I didn't know how to do it. I didn't know how to go and, you know, like as stupid as this might sound, I didn't know how to go just ask for an order, you know, like a good salesperson does. I wasn't trained on that. I was uneducated on it. So I learned that from Eric Lawful. He had sales training. I went through it and it was a real eye opener. And one of the things that his system is like, it's a, it's a sales mountain is, is how he describes it. And at the bottom, you know, the, it's super basic stuff too. So I don't want to offend anybody by making you think I should go through this, but I'm going to. <laughs> So it's, it starts off with a meeting, a prospect. And the purpose of that is just to generate a lead. It's not to talk their ear off. It's just to set an appointment. You're basically qualifying them. Do they want to continue a conversation? Yes or no. If they don't, just move on to the next person. So the whole point of that, like when you're networking, you're not there to chew their ear off. You're not there to create conversations and, and all that. You're just there to generate a lead, set an appointment. Let's take this to a quiet place where we can have a meaningful conversation. That's all it is. That's step number one is separate them from the herd. You're not going to make, I see so many people trying to talk people's ear off in a networking event and trying to make a sale, trying to create rapport, trying to build trust and all that stuff. And it's not the appropriate time. It's out of sequence. It's like if you did that in the dating world, the girl would think you're a freak and she, you would not get a, a call back. <laughs> she would not answer the phone. <laughs> so it, it's, you know, it's, it's the, it's a creepy way to do it. Um, not to say there's not a lid for every pot and it might work in certain situations, but it, just in general, it's not the right sequence. So generate a lead, set an appointment. The appointment now is your time to make your presentation. And on, on his sales mountain, the next thing is in there, 
That's when you build trust and rapport. That's when you talk about them and relate to them and, and make it seem like, okay, you, you two are very similar, make them comfortable with you. <clears throat> and then you start explaining the benefits, not the features, the benefits. The features don't really matter. It's the benefits. What is it going to do for them? And in our, in our world and act, that's create demand and desire. You're talking about, you know, what this does, how it works, how simple it is. And, and what you're doing, you're seeding the fact that this is easy. They can do it. Creating demand and desire for wanting it. And then you get to the point of eliminate the objections. Very similar to ACT. His sales process is very similar to ACT. He just describes it in a different way. So what he does here is he... he does his best to eliminate the objections when he feels he's to a point in the sales process and he's almost to the top of the peak of the mountain right now. And this is where, this is where he asks for the order. And, and I didn't know how simple that actually was to ask for an order. And the way he, the way he does it, which I can totally do this, I am totally comfortable with this approach is all you have to do is say, does this sound like something you want to move forward with? That's his close. That's his call to action. <clears throat> and it's a question. It's evoking basically a yes or no answer. It's simple. But the key is that you close your mouth and you zip it until something is said. That's really important. Because that person, when you pose that question... They go into a thought process. The gears are grinding. They're going over the benefits that you just explained. They're going over the objections you just eliminated. And they're trying to find another one. They're trying to find an, a, another objection, a reason to say no. The conscious mind wants to say no. Remember, the heart is what wants it. The heart's where the desire lives. That's where the emotion lives. The head is like the parent. The head's job's to protect the heart. It's job's to say no, basically, until it's convinced. It's guilty until proven innocent. So it's looking, it's searching for a reason to say no. If it doesn't find one, you did a hell of a job. And then they probably just say, yeah, that sounds great. Let's do it. And, and you don't resell it. You go right into the paperwork and done. If they say no, this, this pushes him into another part of the mountain before it goes over the top, which is called the dance. And this is, I think he calls it the elegant dance. And the elegant dance goes something like this. You have to identify the objection and isolate it. So you ask him, you simply ask, oh, really? And you sound kind of surprised when they say no. You say, oh, really? You don't want to, what's holding you back? And you leave it at that. You let them talk and they'll tell you, they'll tell you their objection. Now, the first thing that they're going to tell you is superficial. It's not the real objection at 99% of the times. <clears throat> they're just giving you, they're just giving you the superficial answer and you, you accept it. You say, Hey, you know, I get it. I understand that. Um, other than that, is there anything else that would be holding you back? If that weren't an issue, is there anything else that would be holding you back? Usually you'll get closer to the truth with this question. And now they'll tell you the real deal. Now they'll give you the real objection and you do the same process. You just listen. It's not your job to talk right now. You listen, let them get it out. When it's all out on the table, you sympathize with them, go, hey, I totally get it. I, 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 I understand. I felt the same way. Um, and you go right back to where you started. Other than that, if that weren't an issue, is there anything else that would keep you from getting this? And you can pose it, keep them from getting this. Because now you're implying that they want it. They should want this. Anything that's going to hold you back, keep you from getting what you want. And a lot of times at this point, there won't be. They'll say, no, that was it. Or there'll be another one. And again, you, you just repeat that process till you get to the end. <clears throat> now, 
if they say, nope, that's it. That's, you know, that's the only thing holding me back. Now, you know what you're up against. Now, you know what objections are on the table and what beliefs are creating those objections. So this is where the dance comes in. So they have moved forward. They took a step forward. And now you're going to take a step forward and they're going to take a step back. And you do the dance. You just explain. You go back into education. You go, hey, I, I could totally understand your point of view. And that's what I thought too until I learned. And then you just explain it. And you do the claim proof benefit. You make the claim that's contrary to the objection. You follow it up with a couple of proof points to make it a fact, not just your opinion. And now it's a fact. And then you reattach it to the benefit of what they actually want. And once you've done that, now you're back, you're out of the elegant dance. And now you're back to the close. And you say, now that you understand, would you like to move forward now? And almost 99 out of 100, they will say, yeah, that sounds great. Let's do it. It's really a simple process. Now, back to the online version of this, we don't have that luxury to do that dance. So that dance has to be done at the follow-up. You pretty much know if they didn't buy your product, they, you know, let's say they signed up for your webinar, they went through it, and they didn't buy it. They said no. So now it's your job to either anticipate why they said no or continue the education process to eliminate any potential objections. Maybe you send them a survey. Maybe you ask them in the survey, you know, what, and, you, you know, you can pose it in many different ways, but basically the premise is, you know, this is a benefit to them. You know what they want. <laughs> oh, excuse me. You know, they want the desired outcome, right? So you're, you're kind of posing the question, if maybe it's a questionnaire, what's holding you back from getting what you really want? What, what, you know, did I screw up? Do you know, did I just do I have an accent you don't like? Or you know, did I have some food in my teeth? Did I have, did I do anything to offend you? I, I just want to know because I, I value you. I value your time. And I really care that you get the outcome. The more genuine you can be, the better this is going to work. And you can't be genuine like that in an email, unless you're Perry Belcher or Frank Curtin and you're really good at it. <laughs> and not to say that, that you can't be that good, but it's much easier to do that in a video format. You send them a little quick video. You say, hey, I, I, I just want to follow up. You know, I made a quick video for you. Um, I just want to make sure that you got what you needed and I didn't, I didn't drop the ball on anything. And the, again, the more genuine you are and the more concerned you are with them, the more you're going to build that trust and rapport. So, and I know you guys want examples of this and I don't have any cause I don't work that hard, <laughs> but if I were to, that is exactly what I would do. I would do it just like that. And, you know, to that point last week, we were talking about how I would do a presentation and sell an SEO product without really calling it an SEO product. And we just did that. I did that with Gwen this morning at 930. We hopped on a webinar and we made an evergreen webinar for her to explain the benefits of the site pop. We didn't, we never called it site pop, by the way, we called it a business boost service and we we made the promise predicated on what they want is they want referrals. We know that most small businesses were built on the back of, of word of mouth advertising and referrals. <clears throat> we also know that that's not working so well for them anymore. It's kind of just like when the yellow pages was the major way people got business and it stopped working. There was a lot of people that didn't understand why their business was suffering. And it's so simple when you put it in front of them and they get it, it's like the light bulb goes on. So that's what we're here for. We're here to educate them in why our product is better for them than what they're using. You know, if they're using the yellow pages and nobody's using the yellow pages and their business is suffering and you have a better option for them, it's your obligation to try and help them. How do you do that? You educate them. 
you first shine a light on the big problem for them so they can see it because most of them have blinders on. They don't see it. They don't know what the problem is or they would fix it. Right. So you show up as helpful. You show up as in their general best interest. <clears throat> You're trying to help them get what they want. They want more business. They don't want to suffer. They don't want to worry about making payroll at the end of every week. And that's where they are. You know, the, those of you that went through the, the Perry Belcher copywriting, it's emotion. You are tapping into that emotion. And <clears throat> you're not trying to hard sell them. You're, you're sympathizing with them. You're, you're educating them that, hey, you know, I get it. I made the same mistake. I, I was right there alongside you. <laughs> and when they see that you're not there anymore, what do you think they're going to want to know? They're going to go, what was your secret? You know, like you see somebody that was, was you know, overweight. And now all of a sudden they're, they're thin and skinny. You haven't seen them for years. You go, what's your first question? What's your secret? How do I do that? My God, you look great. You know, was it hard? Was it easy? If, if you got an easy button, please share it. <laughs> this, is, this is all just basic human nature. People want what they see. If they don't see it, they're not going to want it. If they don't see what you've got and they don't see their problem, they're, they're just, you know, they're in a snowstorm, you know, give them a pair of goggles, <laughs> help them out. <laughs> That's all you got to do is just show up and be helpful. So, so anyway, we, we did that. We did that little presentation this morning and I recorded it and Gwen, are you on? Yeah, it looks like you're on here. I'm on. <clears throat> oh, okay. Um, I've got the recording now. I don't know if you want to share it with the group or. Yeah, we can. You guys want to see it? It's, it wasn't very long. It was probably 15 minutes. Yeah. All right. So let me, let me pop it up and you guys can see. And, and don't judge me on being a poor presenter because I'm, I'm not a great presenter, but I'm not, one of the things about me too, is I'm not polished. And I think that's one of the things that will endear people to you. If you're too smooth and you're too slick, you come off like leisure suit, Larry, and they don't trust you. And they're like, Oh God, what's this guy trying to sell me? You know? So the, it, it, you can admit things. Like I even say it in there. I'm like, Oh, you know, sorry. I'm trying to figure out how to do this. I know damn well how to get the presentation started, right? <laughs> so that's a little bit by engineering. I make them feel like I'm just like them. Never say it. It's all under the hood, but it's, it's part of it. So don't think you've got to be perfect. All right. So let's, let's get this thing. I'll get it up here and share the screen. Okay, let's see if I can blow it up. Oh, it starts with my eyes closed. Great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's just where I paused it. I paused it at the two second mark. So we can uh, start okay. it. Now there's a little bit on the front and a little bit on the back that, that uh, was a little clunky, but not a big deal. You don't have to be perfect to do this stuff. If you, if you worry about trying to be perfect before you do something, you're never going to do anything. So the moral of the story is just do it. It doesn't have to be perfect. It will work just as well. Okay, welcome everyone. This is Gwen with Vision Interface and we are hosting a webinar with John Limbacher. John is known in the SEO world as the godfather of SEO. He's been at it since the beginning. And I got to meet and connect with John in 2008 at um, a webinar that he put on with Ryan Dice that was called Rank Mongol. And he was supposed to have like a 13-week training program. And I believe that same call is going on still today. So 
He's got a heart for people and training and helping people understand what marketing is and how it works. All right. Well, thanks for the intro there, Gwen. And uh, yeah, this, uh, this training I started was kind of was over 10 years ago, I guess. <laughs> I'm quiet. Pretty, pretty crazy the way, uh, the way things go. But uh, anyway, I created a presentation here for your audience. And uh, let me see if I can figure out how to uh, share the screen and we'll get, uh, we'll get going. Always, always gets me how to share the screen on this thing. <laughs> okay, there we go. Okay, we could have had my phone going off at the very beginning. Right, so there we go. Yeah, we got it. All right, I'm going to go ahead and turn my camera off too so they get the full screen. And what we're going to be talking about today is the best way to grow your business. And a lot of people come up with different things when they hear that. Like when you ask somebody, hey, what's the best way to grow your business? They'll come up with all kinds of different answers. But what I have found, and especially in small business and especially in brick and mortar businesses, they will all answer the same thing. And it's, I call it WOM. And no, it's not short for woman. I know a lot of people say, get a woman in your business and she will blow it up for you. <laughs> but WOM is word of mouth. This is the advertising that a lot of businesses have been built on over the years, like generational businesses. And, and this is how they do it. And this is how they have them. You know, people talking, talking to your neighbors, you know, this pretty much is the way it was done. And all you had to do was do good work and the word would be spread. And, you know, I think a lot of you probably have built your business that way in the past. But the problem is there's bad news to the story. And the bad news is things are changing. You know, people are not talking to each other like they used to. So what that does is that makes referrals suffer. Referrals just go down the tubes because people aren't doing what they used to do. They're not going out. People have become a lot more introverted with the internet. They don't have to go out and like ask people. You know, that's that's one thing. Nobody likes to, to show, <clears throat> they don't like to show weakness. And sometimes when they have to ask for something, they see that internally as a sign of weakness and they really don't like to do that. So what they do now is they pull up Google. And, you know, let's say you're in the pool business. They're typing in who's the best pool guy. Instead of walking out to the fence and asking their neighbor or calling up their friends, you know, a lot of times this is done in the middle of the night. You know, people start looking for stuff in the middle of the night. And now they can ask their friend, Mr. Google. And this is kind of the way it's going. So what would happen? What would it look like to your business if Google said you were the best at what you do, if your prospects and your, your prospective customers rather went on to Google and asked for who was the best for what you do, how would that look if Google referred you? They have become the biggest referral source on the planet and also probably the most trusted. So let me just tell you what this would do if Google said you were the best people would be lining up around the building to do business with you instead of going to your competitors. That's pretty much what would happen. It's pretty cool, isn't it? But there's some more bad news to the story. <laughs> and I know I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but to get Google to do that, you have to convince Google that you're the one that they should refer. And this is where the roadblock comes in. It would be great to get Google to refer us, but we have to do this little convincing act. And the thing that convinces Google, Google is based on this thing called an algorithm, which 
nobody likes us. This is like homework. This is like algebra homework back in high school. It's just yuck. It's looking at a bunch of stuff that makes no sense to most people. But it's made this way for a purpose. It's made this way to, to push people away and say, don't try this at home. This is too difficult. But the reality is this algorithm is all based on simple math. If you break all that, all those algebraic equations down, it's really some pretty simple stuff. <clears throat> and I'm going to break it down for you guys today and show you there's basically three pieces to it. And they're pretty simple, especially if you understand them and how to do them. So I'm going to show you exactly what it takes to get Google to refer customers right to your business. Here's the three pieces to the puzzle. These are what we call ranking factors. This is what will get Google to push you up in their ranks and send you customers, send you the best referrals on the planet. So the first one over here, we call this on-page optimization. And it's kind of just a basic verifier that you don't just have garbage put up on the internet and that it's actually real content. And I'll show you in a minute what that kind of looks like, but I just want to cover these three pieces real quick and then we'll get into it a little deeper. The next one is authority back backlinks. And what this is, this is other websites that link to you as a referral source for content. <clears throat> and the reason that that's important is if other people are sending their visitors to you, that tells Google that you're important. That tells them that you belong at the top. Now, those first two, the on-page, obviously, you have total control over this. The authority backlinks, you don't necessarily have control over who's going to link to you, but you can game that system. There's been a whole industry called the SEO industry, that search engine optimization that has grown up around this, these two factors of creating on-page optimization and also these authority backlinks. And basically what this whole industry is about, it's about gaming Google's system. The problem with that is they created so many garbage websites and just pushed them to the top because they could, that Google stopped trusting that. They still do look at the on page just as a, a, a validator to see if the site is worth ranking. <laughs> They still do look at authority backlinks because if you don't have any, that's kind of an indicator that you're not very important. But the third piece, that pink piece, is a new piece that Google has brought into play. And it's basically, it's artificial intelligence looking at user experience. And what they're looking for, they're looking for these natural language patterns. That's what they actually call them in their algorithm. But I, I say it's, it's simpler than that. It's just search signals. It's what people are doing, how they're interacting with your website that gives Google that stamp of approval that, hey, this is a good site. These people liked it. So it's pretty simple stuff. So let me, let me kind of just walk you through. And you don't have to do any of this stuff. You can get this stuff done very easily. We'll start with the on-page stuff. This is like titles, your, the title of your pages, your description of the pages. There's a thing called a schema tag that kind of tells the search engines a little more detail of what your site is all about. And the purpose for all of this, like what Google's trying to do is they're trying to index the entire world of web pages. And it's like a big library. So this is what Google has is like library cards to look up the book and the page and find exactly where the information is so they can get their user to it quickly. The other thing that they're relying on is secure connections. They want to make sure everybody is safe out there. So these are on, again, on page factors. They're also looking at is the website mobile friendly. If the site's not mobile friendly, Google knows most of the world is on mobile devices now searching for stuff. So they don't want to send their visitors. They don't want to make a referral to somebody that's going to get a bad user experience. And ultimately, you want to focus on your 
actual user experience. Make sure that your website offers exactly what your customers and your prospects are going to want. Be helpful. Give them the right content. Don't give them too much or too little. Just the right amount. Lead them through your site. Give them a user experience that they will enjoy and they will come back for. So as far as the code and the descriptions and the schema, this is kind of what your website looks like behind the scenes. This is what Google sees. This is not what your users see. This is what Google sees. So this stuff, and again, you don't have to learn how to do this stuff. All you have to do is contact your webmaster and say, hey, can you make sure that my titles are right? And if they don't know what that means, tell them what the titles of each page should be. Sometimes webmasters are not in tune with search engine optimization and they don't think that way. But like, this is a perfect example of a disaster. Like the title of this is the pool guys. You know, nobody is gonna search for the pool guys. They're gonna search for, you know, pool maintenance or pool service or, you know, pool service in their area. The description is blank. It says this page is blank. How do you expect Google to want to refer something like this? It says keywords go here. There's not even any keywords filled out. So you would not believe how many websites have this basic problem. And what they're telling Google is, hey, don't send us referrals. We're not worthy. So you don't want to fall into this bucket. <clears throat> now, next is an off-page optimization. You might be wondering, how do I get all these links? How do I get to look like I'm popular? And the very first thing is having a Google My Business page linked to your website. Google loves their own properties. So this is something that you should definitely do. It's free, it's super easy. You go to Google and you, you put in, you know, GMB or Google My Business and you sign up for a free account. You fill it out and you connect your website to it. Now you've got a link, that's your first link. Citations, that, this is also known as a NAP. NAP stands for name, address, and phone number. When you set up that GMB, that Google My Business page, sometimes Google will change what you put in to correct your address to what they think it should be. Like for instance, if you put such and such avenue, they might abbreviate it to such and such AVE or AVE period. And whatever it is that they decide it should be, you should take that and use it. Do not change it. That's your NAP. That's your name, address, and phone number. And if you change it, you create confusion. If Google starts seeing your NAP it show up out in the world in different variations, they're not gonna know what to trust. So it's very important that that is identical across every place that you post it on the internet. So citations are just places like directories, business directories, business listings. If you've got a listing in, in your local chamber of commerce, put your NAP in exactly like Google expects it to be and you'll create trust and authority. And those incoming links, that means from other websites. And I know you're, People in your exact business that are competitors of you, they're not going to link to you. But there's a lot of ancillary business that you can get to link to you that are in the same kind of thing. Like, for instance, if you're a realtor, you could get a moving company to link to you, or you could, move, you could link out to a moving company. So if you were a moving company, perfect thing is to go out to realtors. Realtors, their customers are going to need a mover. So they'll give you a link. So that's how you get these links. You find other businesses that work together with your customers, not in competition, and just ask them to give you a link. Sometimes you can give them a referral fee to incentivize them to do that. Those are perfect links. And then social signals, if you have content out there like YouTube videos and things in social media, the more people link them, share them, and mention your NAP, the better off you'll be. So that's kind of your, your off-page optimization. And this is what one of those Google My Business pages looks like. 
So this is the internet dominators. It has a link to your website. It's got directions. And you just fill this thing out. You go in and you just give it all the details. You can put photos in there and then it will show up. Now I've got, I've got my business listed in Facebook. I've got it in Yelp. I've got it in a company called Sotellus. There's the, ex the actual website itself. So all of these things link to me. This one's got 612 likes. So the more of that that you get going on, the better off you'll be, the more trusted you'll be, and the better chance you'll have of Google sending you those prize referrals. So the third piece of the puzzle, I talked about this a little bit earlier, the artificial intelligence. This has made it incredibly unfair to small businesses. And the reason why, if you do a search, you can prove this by doing a simple search for almost anything right now. And what you're gonna find is you're gonna find big brands. You're gonna find major, major websites, major companies, and you don't see too many little guys in the top of the search anymore. <clears throat> the reason for that is Google has figured out by, by means of these search signals, what's important. And one of the signals that they get is brand signals. So big brands, everybody knows about them. So they're typing them into the search engine. So that's what's making this incredibly unfair to the little guys. The thing is, what we've done is we have found certain search signals that give your site a massive boost. And that's what I'm gonna share with you guys today. It's absolutely true. These search signals have a major influence on Google's algorithm. That's why they're so important. So here's what they do. Search signals represent real user search behavior. And that has become so important to Google to verify if it's true, if the, if the site is optimized and it's got incoming links, is it actually a good site? That's what Google's biggest problem has been in the past is verifying, is it a good site and should I send my traffic to it? So by seeing the user's behavior, it tells them the answer. If the users are having a good behavior, if, if they're having a good user experience rather, that tells Google, hey, I should send my traffic here. It also shows the user's intent. Like if they're just searching, just, just poking around, or if they're actually looking to buy something, Google sees that from these signals. It also shows true popularity versus people actually searching versus you just getting a bunch of businesses to link to you. So again, it's a, it's a big verifier for Google to show them who belongs at the top. And up until recently, this could not be manipulated like the on-page optimization and the link building. But we figured out a way to send these signals in under the radar. So pretty cool. And I'll share that with you in, in just a little while here. But let's talk about the five most powerful triggers or signals rather. And the biggest one here is searches from mobile devices. That is a big trigger that Google is looking for. The other one is proximity search. If you've got a local business and you've got people searching tightly related to your, ge or your geography, that is a good signal for them. And what I mean by that is let's say your business is in the, in the center of the circle and you see there's a lot of searchers in there searching. And then when you go out, say 10 miles, and you have less searchers, then you go out 50 miles and you have less, but they're still out there. They're still searching, but more searching tighter to the location. So that's called proximity search. And that's another powerful signal to Google. This is for all businesses. It doesn't matter if you're a little local pizza parlor or a worldwide entity. People in your neighborhood know your name more than the ones on the outside. Just because of your, your building is there. <clears throat> People driving by, they might search for you. The next one is navigational searches. What a navigational search is, that's a specific search by somebody that knows exactly what they're looking for. Like for instance, 
instead of just searching for pizza in a city, they would be typing in, let's say, a real specific search, like Pizza Hut menu Huntington Beach. That means they know the brand, they know what, what page on that site they're looking for, and the location. That's a navigational search. They're trying to search to get right to the exact page in the website instead of just searching for Pizza Hut and then, and then kind of scanning through, looking for the menu, looking for the location, all that stuff. The next one, and we talked a little bit about this a minute ago, it makes it totally unfair to the little guys, is those brand searches. People that actually put in the brand. If you're searching for a consumer good, I think you're going to find Amazon at the top of almost all of those searches now because everybody puts in Amazon in the search. They've branded the search. <clears throat> and probably the most powerful one of all is a revised search that combines the brand. And what I mean by that is you might type in a keyword looking for something and you didn't get what you wanted. And then you bounce back and you revise the search and you add the brand to it. And Amazon is a perfect example. If I'm looking for, uh, for Dawn laundry detergent and I don't come up with the site I'm looking for, I go back and I, I revise the search to Amazon Dawn laundry detergent. And now I'm telling them I'm looking for it on Amazon. So it's, an, it's not only a navigational search, it's a branded search and it's a combined brand and keyword search. So these things stack up and <clears throat> the more of them in play, the more powerful it becomes. And when you do this right, it creates these, these signals and it creates trust. And it also is gonna get you top Google ranking. And in short, what that means is you're gonna get the biggest, best referral source on the planet to send you referrals. <clears throat> so. And that's what we're all here for. I have a cool story about one of my clients that uh, that we did this for. And I think Gwen knows who I'm talking about here. <laughs> but I got an email and I was kind of freaked out at first because I thought we had done something wrong. And this email read something like this. It says, please excuse my language, but holy whatever are you guys responsible for this? <clears throat> when I first read that, my heart about sank to, my, to the bottom of my chest and thinking, oh God, what did we do? And then they, they continued on to say, I hope, or I'm hoping my rank tracker software isn't malfunctioning. And then when I saw the LOL, I was kind of relieved. I'm like, oh, okay, this is not that bad. <laughs> and then he, he went on to show me he said, these are new listings from his rank tracker in the top 50 of Google in the last 30 days after we started sending these signals to his website. And I was looking at this and he, he was a dentist, you know, he's a local dentist and he didn't have any of these before we started. And after 30 days, it was like, there was pages. This is one page here. This is, let's see, there's a second page and a third page of all of these, these, these were new listings. These are basically referrals to their dental clinic in the top 10 of Google. And I'm like, wow, that is, that is just simply awesome. And basically here's all you have to do to get that to happen. Like I said, first of all, you got to have the website coding right. That's something that your webmaster can do for you. And then you need some of those basic links and you can do that stuff yourself. It's not that difficult. But after that, you need to get a bunch of people out there to send you these search signals. And I know I've got a bunch of laptops shown there, but you need to have these going on mobile devices, sending these search signals into Google. And it's like if you could get you know a couple hundred of your best friends to do this for you on a daily basis, you'd have this game licked. That's a little, little harder to do than to say. <laughs> but what would happen is if you had all these devices sending these signals, 
it would be pushing your website to the top. You'd be getting more listings, more traffic, more leads, more sales, and more profits. So that being said, we know that's almost impossible to get all of your friends to do this for you on a regular basis. So we came up with a service and it's a business boost service that does these signals for you. And we've got an entire network. It's not just a nationwide network. I show a, a nationwide map here, but we've got this network all over the world. And we've got, these are all of, all of our customers on here and they're all participating. They're all using their own devices in here with our apps to send these search signals to each other. <clears throat> and the cool part, it's all totally automated. They just have to put the app on their phones and our software in the back does all of this for you. It automates the process of creating and sending these search signals through to Google for you from all these users all over the place. And it uses those five trigger signals that I just shared with you guys. It's real users make up the network. There's no robots. There's no funny stuff here. This is all real cell phones from from real users. It's all of our customer base and they're all over the world. Doesn't do anything crazy. It's completely natural. It runs about 17 searches per day on each person's device. And that's totally randomized. One day it might be 12, one day it might be 20, but it sends them, again, it looks for the users that are closest to the, to the core business and it hits those first. And then it goes out just like I, showed you how, the, how that works. So it does proximity searches in concentric circles. It also performs the majority of these during basic business hours, you know, in the local time of the business. So again, it's totally natural. It's, it doesn't show up on anybody's radar, it's out of the ordinary. It just looks like your site is popular and you're getting these search signals that Google can trust your site and pushes it to the top. So here's actually how it works. A lot of people ask, you know, well, what is it actually doing? What's this app doing on my phone? Because you can't see it work, it works in the background. But ultimately what it does, it performs a search for your keyword. And it, it's not unnecessarily on your device, on your phone, it's picking a random phone out of the network and it's running a search for one of your keywords. And then it, scroll, it scrolls through Google looking for your website. If it doesn't find you in, let's say, the first five pages, then it revises the search and it adds your brand. This is so important because it shows Google that the searcher didn't find what they were looking for. And Google hates this. They want to provide a good user experience. So they don't like that they blew it. So after you do this, after it adds your brand, it reruns the search, and then naturally, your site's going to come up with your brand attached to it. So when it comes up, it finds your domain, it clicks on it to visit your website. It spends time on several random pages throughout your site, and ultimately lands on your contact page, stays there for anywhere from one to four minutes, and then it closes out the browser session. Now, the reason that that's so important is by closing that session, it shows Google that you found exactly what you were looking for and now you're done. Google loves that. That tells Google that they did the right thing. They sent the right person to the right place and the good user experience was fulfilled. So that is really what it's all about. So, we offer this business boost service to businesses, local, national, uh, nationwide, worldwide, if you qualify. Now, a lot of people kind of freak out at that and they say, oh my God, how do I qualify? And it's pretty simple. <clears throat> There's two things for you to qualify. You, for one, you have to participate in our network. You have to be willing to add your own phones um, and these are Android devices. If you don't have an Android, you can buy one really cheap and just connect it to Wi-Fi. You don't even need a cell service on it. You just need to connect it to Wi-Fi, leave it in your office. Um, you can also use Windows desktops and also uh, Mac computers. So any, any one of those, 
uh, will work. And we recommend that you connect two devices for, for each project. The second thing is you got to pass basic site validation. What we were talking about there in the, in the first few slides was that on-page optimization. You, you know, we're going to need to know that your site is worthy of sending traffic to. It's got to be mobile friendly. It's, it's got to have those basic requirements that we covered in the beginning of this presentation. And that's really it. You know, that, that's all it requires. And then instead of having your friends do this for you, our army, our network can send these signals to Google for you and create some phenomenal results. You know, here's, uh, here's some samples of some of our clients that we've done this for. This one is uh, the keyword was computer networking technician training San Diego. Now that's a long keyword, but that's one of those navigational type searches. And they were on page five when we started. They popped down first and then went up to number one. And that's pretty typical. A lot of times when you start doing something new, Google doesn't trust it. So they'll drop you and then they send you back up after they start trusting it. And you can see they bounced around there before it kind of stuck at the top. This is very typical. Google's really cagey about trust. You have to earn their trust by doing quality for a long time. So here's another one. Same, same thing. This is pool service in Tustin. Exact same result. They dropped it first, kind of bounced, and then went to the top. That's very, very typical on any kind of service like this. Here's one that actually went up and then down, up and down, went to the top, kind of bounced around and then stuck. Again, very, very typical. Now, this one was not typical. This was an orthodontist in Valencia, California. This is one of the ones that I showed you, that the guy that sent me that email that I kind of freaked out about. This was his orthodontist. Went from like page five, bang, right to number one and stuck there. And I think that what the problem was there, he had everything else perfect. He had his on page perfect. He had a ton of links. He just didn't have the user signals. So when we added that on top, it was like, it was like putting a match to a keg of dynamite. So it, it, there's all kinds of different scenarios that can happen here. And every situation is going to be different. So here's another one. This is a chiropractor in Normal. Normal is actually a city, believe it or not. I don't know where it is, but it's one of our customers. And they went, again, they went down a page and then up to the top, bounced around and stuck. So very, very typical. Here's emergency dentist, same thing. Here's another one, swimming pool repair service. Up, down, up, down, and finally to the top. So just imagine what it would do for your business if you had the best referral source on the planet sending you leads, referring you instead of your customers. And remember, you can't get this anywhere else. We built this network for our customers and it's only available to our customers. So this isn't something that you can buy off the shelf at any street corner. Imagine that. Imagine the advantage that you would have over your competitors. So <clears throat> when we do this, here's basically what you get from the, from the Business Boost service. We evaluate your site, first of all, to make sure that it's right, make sure that you, your own page is correct. If it's not, we'll give you a list of what needs to be fixed so you can go to your webmaster and have them fix that for you. We'll actually recommend keywords to get started. We'll set up your campaign, provide you the tracking apps to put on your, on your Android phone or your desktop computers. And then if you have two connected, we'll send you up to 500 searches per month. And if you don't qualify, obviously there's no charge. We're gonna evaluate your site um, and do those first steps for you at, at no charge if you don't qualify. Obviously we will help you if you want this service and you don't qualify, we'll do everything that we can to help you get to the point where you do qualify so you can take advantage of this. 
And the, the really cool thing about this is everybody can afford this since we've automated it. We can do this for $97 a month if you qualify. And you can ride this wave. You can ride this literal referral wave. So again, as far as the qualifying, what we're gonna look at is to make sure your site's secure, make sure it's mobile friendly, make sure it's responsive. Uh, we can't do this on a single page website. If you don't have a real website, we, we really can't do this. You need a multi-page site because you need that contact page for us to land on at the end of the experience. And if you don't have a call to action on your website, <clears throat> it's setting you up for failure. And we really don't want to participate in that process. So your website really needs to have a clear call to action for what you want your visitors to do when they get there so you can be successful. So those are basically the, the qualifying things. And again, we're here to help you fix these things if they're either not there or broken. And uh, that's, that's really about all there is to it. So at this point, it's, it really comes down to the question of what's your next move? You're playing against the machine here. You need to fight AI with AI. <laughs> and we can do that for you for just $97 a month. So it's pretty much priced where any small business can afford this. If you go to uh, you know, other types of services that promise this, there's a lot of SEO companies out there that will promise to get you to the top. They're going to charge you you know, way, way more than this. Usually they're like $1,000 a month plus some. And they, most of them are, are not doing what they're supposed to be doing. So anyway, I'll just kind of leave it at that. All right. So I'll, I'll close it off there. And was that helpful for you guys? I know it was a little longer than I thought. I was thinking that was like only 15 minutes, but it was more like 37 minutes. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, one that, of the, that, was, that was great. One of the things I want to do now that you've seen the delivery of it, let's go back through the actual presentation and I'll show you what I was doing. Do you guys want to see like all the pieces? I'll point them all out. Yes. Okay. So, so here we're right out of the gate. We're talking about what they want. They want to grow their business. You know, that's, that's basically what they want. That's the desired outcome. And then we're shining a light on, you know, what it, what it's going to take, what that was. We're exposing their first problem here. We're putting a light on the big problem that they've got. And, and basically, we're, we're, we're doing a takeaway here because we've got the thing they want. We've got why they want it, how they got it before. And now we're doing the takeaway. And now we're leading them into the desired outcome. We're saying, okay, the, the ground shifted under you, which everybody in business knows that happens. Nothing stays the same. You have to shift with the tide. So we're guiding them through that process. We're just taking them down the road. Here, I'm showing them exactly what they want. They want people lining up around the building to do business with them instead of their competitors. So again, this is promise. This is big promise. And then we go to hurdle. You know, anything worth having, there's going to be some hurdles to get to it. We're just putting that, you know, right up front. You're going to have some hurdles here. And then we're going to show them how to overcome the hurdles. We're actually going to walk them through for free. We're going to show them exactly how to do this. Now, all of these slides here, you notice I never, I've not once in here did I talk about myself. Not once did I try and create authority for myself by demonstrating I'm demonstrating my authority. I don't have to come out and talk about, you know, how rich I am or, or what I drive or where I live, like all these other guys do. I don't need to do that because I actually have authority. I can show them what they really need to know. That is much more beneficial to your audience than showing them what you drive and, and look at me and all of this kind of stuff. 
So you're, you're basically helping them through getting what they want. You're showing them how to do it. And it's like with Frank Kern uh, and a lot of the other marketers, the more you give them, the more you advance them down the timeline, getting them closer to what they want, the first step to them getting closer to what they want is understanding how to get there. They need to understand what it takes. They need to understand how much is between them and what they actually want. And that's where you can come in and that's where you can offer to help them, help them get what they want. So another thing you guys probably noticed was I spoke very slowly and very methodically, very clearly, and I showed examples of everything. Another thing that I did was I, I brought them into a secret language. Every time I said something that I knew they didn't understand, I immediately explained it, like the NAP, the name, address, phone number, the SEO, the search engine optimization. I never left them feeling stupid. I talked in a third grade level all the way through this thing. I never used fancy language. I never talked above them. I never talked down to them. I just was very clear and concise on a very simplistic way. You do not want to talk down to your audience. You do not want to make them think like they're above you. Bring yourself right down in their level, even below them. Even go below them. They will, they will love you for it, believe me. <clears throat> so we're, we're going down in here. We're telling them exactly how it works. And we're telling them how they can do it themselves. You know, here we get into proof. You know, this is, this is actually proof. So when you're, when you're going through and you're showing them how to do it themselves, they're getting more desire for the thing. They're seeing proof. They're wanting it more and more. You know, the, the deeper they get in here, and, and here we go. Here's all you have to do. Now, this is a massive takeaway here. You notice I kind of did it in a humorous way. Here's all you'd have to do. Just get a hundred of your closest friends to send these signals for you every day, right? That's not going to happen. That's a takeaway. But then I'm showing them what's going to happen if they could do that or if they did do that. They'd get more listings, traffic, leads, sales, and profits, everything on their wish list. It's like, this is like a Christmas list. And then here, I'm offering it offering to do it for them. So I've created demand and desire. I've, I've done takeaways. You've taken them on an emotional roller coaster of ups and downs here. It's, it's very emotional at this point. And uh, the, the, one of the mistakes that I did make on here, let's see if I can find it right here. And Gwen, you can go in because I didn't really mention internet dominators here. You could go in and change this for vision interface. I should have done that to begin with, but I didn't even think about it. But if you're going to send this out and, and pose this as I'm working for you and all of that, just change this one slide out to vision interface and show that it's, it's going to be the same stuff. So that'll be, oh, okay. that'll be a piece of cake for you. I wasn't even worried about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it it's a little out of alignment. If you're showing it to your customers and then we're bringing in internet dominators into the picture, you don't want to do that. Right. And, but I don't think I ever said anything about internet dominators. I just said our website. So right. you, I don't you, think you did either. Yeah. If you just change that slide out to vision interface, you'll be golden. Awesome. Um, here I'm going into, you know, massive proof. Nobody wants to be the first one through the wall. They want to be the one that follows the people through the wall and gets the benefit without the bruises. So I'm talking about proof here. So that is, that's basically an objection of, does this work? Has anyone else done this? I'm, over, I'm just eliminating that objection right out of the gate. Here I'm eliminating objection number two that this is real user devices. This isn't what they might've heard as black hat. So I eliminate that objection right out of the gate. Back into showing them how it works again. And then we go into 
another takeaway that you you really not everybody's going to get this you have to qualify so i've got their their desire for this thing i haven't even made an offer yet i've just told them that we have the service and now i'm just telling them they might not be able to get it so it's a massive takeaway and then i tell them the qualifiers and you know this this again is just is just leading them through a process and then I tell them if they qualify, I'm forecasting them now, they're going to get the, they're going to get our army to go to work and do this for them. And then I go into proof, a bunch of different proof slides. And the reason I did a bunch of these, they're all different industries. So there wouldn't have an objection of, well, this might not work for my industry. I'm showing them a plethora of different industries, different keywords. So again, that's, that's proof. And it's another elimination of objections of will this work for me? Because I don't see me up here. I've got a bunch of different types of things. And now what am I doing after the claim? See, we've got the claim here. We've got the proof. And now I'm tying it to the benefit. I'm forecasting them into the future as though this has already happened with the word imagine. Imagine you've got the best referral source on the planet sending you leads. I'm forecasting. I'm doing exactly what I talk about in three-dimensionalizing the benefit here. You know, they're they're referring you instead of your competitors. That's like the story I tell about the 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 woman that walks into the to the room and everyone notices how good she looks after she's lost the weight. I'm forecasting them. Uh, Oh, one other thing I wanted to, to mention here, when I was doing the proof, I was showing the proof here, I'm also setting expectations so they don't flip out when something natural happens like they drop to begin with. Really, really important that you set expectations so they know how the process is going to work and they're not freaked out by any part of it once it ensues. So then after... After we've forecast them in, we've, we've done the claim, the proof, the benefit, objections are out of the way. Now and only now is the offer. So here I'm telling them what they get. I'm eliminating another objection here of if they don't qualify, there's no cost to this. So there's, that's a risk reversal. There's no risk to this offer. And then I'm revealing the price. And again, only 97 if you qualify. I've also eliminated the objection here of expensive SEO programs like they may have encountered in the past. So it's, it's the final offer with another elimination of the final objection. <clears throat> then we go into the qualifying process. This slide right here over the last two years has sold about probably 50 website development projects for me. When I do this presentation to different audiences, um, the first question that comes up is, "My, I know my website's a disaster. Can you fix it for me? I say, yeah, we have a full website development team. We can take care of that. We can build you a brand new website that's up to spec, up to the standards of today, and it'll work perfectly for you. So that's another one. And then we go into the final call to action. I say it right here. We can help you fix these things. That sells a lot of stuff. And then here, what's your final move? Now, this is kind of the, the final clincher of it's time to make a decision. Do you want to stay where you're at and suffer because your referral sources are drying up? Or do you want to move into the future, ride the wave and have our automated thing do this for you. That was another thing too. I mentioned automating it. When you show people all the work, that's another objection of, oh my God, I'm not going to do all that. And then I came in with, we automate the process. So that was an objection elimination. So, you know, that's, that's basically what you're doing. You're, you're, you're bringing hope you're, you're pulling the hope away, you're restoring the hope, you're taking them in an emotional roller coaster, but ultimately you're just offering to just do it for them. Like when you, when you go to this offer, what do they have to do here? 
We're going to evaluate their site. We're going to recommend the keywords. We're going to set up the campaign. We're going to provide the apps. Basically, all they have to do is plug it in. And then we're going to send them the search signals. What do they have to do? They don't have to do anything. All they have to do is decide yes. We've eliminated all the work out of this. It's automated. So again, the takeaway and then the final, the final call to action. So let's see. I don't think I missed anything here. So that's a lot of pieces jammed into a whatever that was, a 30-minute presentation. It's it's it was the entire beginning to end um, of, a, of a marketing campaign. There's the only thing after this is a follow-up sequence if they don't buy, which is what I was talking about prior to this. So, okay, John, two things. Roger, Here. Roger's always wanting to know. Well, give me an example. Well, there you go. No, we want more. We want more. We want more. That's the whole <laughs> enchilada right there. <laughs> John, can you hear me? Yep. Can we get those slides? Everything's available for a price. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, the price is free. About, no, no, you get you guys can have anything I got, so no problem. Would you put it up in the resellers area or in the the resources area for us? Yeah, I can do that. I also have another question, and this is my OCD kicking in big time. But every time you do a presentation, there's a little tiny half circle at the top in the center of the screen. Where is that coming from? Why is that everywhere in all of your presentations? What, what that is, that is a tool. It's a floating tool on my desktop for screen capture. The little red half circle, half moon. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a floating toolbar for screen capture. If I want to use your slides, I have to go in there and edit that out of every damn one of your slides. That I, <laughs> yeah. <so. laughs> <laughs> it's really not that big a deal. I don't think anybody would ever question what that was. Also, I'm really, I'm really wondering, seeing how everybody else is, like you say, just about at a minimum of $1,000 a month for any kind of SEO work that actually works. Why do you only charge 99 bucks? Why didn't you at least do 247 or something? I mean, at that- Stop it, still, Richard. Stop it. it. The, it, it, what? No, no, that, that's a great question, Linda. That, that's an absolutely <laughs> phenomenal question. And I'll tell you why. It's just my door opener. That's all this is. That is that this is the beginning. This is client acquisition. <clears throat> if I came out with 297 or 597 or 497 or whatever. If I was over a hundred dollars, it would cut my conversion by 10. I'd have 10 times less customers. Now I know that when I bring on a customer, their lifetime, I would rather bring on 10 times lifetime customers at a small amount, knowing that I'm going to do all kinds of stuff for them over the next 10 years, 20 years, whatever. I'm going to build their websites. I'm going to host their websites. I am going to destroy their SEO guy. Absolutely destruct him. And guess who's going to get the SEO work? Guess who's going to get the $1,000 a month program that a lot of these people are already paying and they're unhappy with. So I come in, I come in for 97 bucks. I'm not telling them they have to get rid of their SEO guy. I'm actually telling them to go back to them. We'll tell you how to tell them to fix it. And then they're going to go back and they're going to go, why am I paying this guy? He didn't even know how to do this. I'm going to destroy everybody in my path. Oh, so you do have people that get upsold to the higher stuff then. I guarantee you everybody that signs up for this $97 thing and they see how it works, they're going to be wanting everything I do. They're going to be asking me, can you do this? Can you do that? So the other, last question then is why do you avoid SEO when SEO is still such a huge search term? Because it's, it, it's just too big of a hurdle of an objection. I just, I don't even want to go into that pond. Everybody, 
I have made the majority of my money throughout my life doing things that no one else is doing. The last thing I want to jump into is a big bloody pond where everybody's trying to do the same thing. No what thanks. Is- I'll go swim in my own little fresh water. <laughs> but, what, but then how, if you're not doing SEO, what are they? Well, I guess the question is, do you do any search or advertising where you're doing keywords or anything like that? Or are you, are you basing it all on doing these live or recorded presentations in front of existing audiences? Because that's something that most of us don't have access to. Oh yeah, no, this is, this is the way I get the majority of my business is these types of presentations. I cater it to who I'm talking to. Like this presentation has been changed, you know, 20 different times, depending on what room I'm talking to. Well, not being the godfather of SC, not being the godfather of SEO, it's kind of hard for me to get in front of groups. (laughs) And so I have to rely on other ways of getting people's attention. It's actually not that hard. I'm not getting in front of these groups because I'm the godfather of SEO. I'm getting in front of these groups because I'm giving them what they want. They want to make money. They've got the group. They need a, a they need a vehicle to make money from the group that they've built. That's yeah, why they put to... me on. They don't put me on for any other reason. In fact, most of the people that put me on a webinar have never met me. They don't know who I am. It's a it's a word of mouth referral generally from somebody that's going to get the second tier commission level for making the intro. So it's not because of who I am or what I've done. It's because what I have to offer them. Roger, go ahead. What is their level of commission uh, initially if you make a sale and then ongoing? The, the person that invites you to their webinar, their group. I, I generally give 50% on the front end and 25% thereafter. So they make 50 bucks on a sale for this and then they make 25 bucks a month after. Now, usually I'm not, I'm not selling this particular thing on, on the big webinars. Usually this is I'm invited to an actual room to do this presentation. The webinars that I always talk about, that's where we sell the SitePop software itself to agencies and actual SEO guys. It's a very different conversation there. We are talking about SEO because that's their world. That's what they live in. The reason I don't talk SEO to retail customers is because they've all heard it. They've all got a bad sense of it. They think it costs too much. I'm walking in a door where I'm going to get the shit knocked out of me before I even get to get up on my feet, right? I don't care for that. You guys know how hard I like to work. I don't like to go in and get my ass handed to me. I'm going to go in under the radar just like this, you never heard me talk about SEO other than to to describe an evil industry that's been created, right? But what am I providing? I'm selling them an SEO service under the radar. I'm just positioning it to where it's looked on favorably. I want to be looked upon favorably and different than the rest. So it's a unique mechanism. It's something they've never heard before. If you are unique, you eliminate all of your competition. You're no longer swimming in bloody water. I guarantee you, you try and make an SEO sale, you're going to be in the bloodiest of bloody water that ever existed. And you're going to be in there with a bunch of con men and people that are not looked upon highly, and you are going to look like one of them. Is that kind of answer why I wouldn't do that. (laughs) Now that's very different. If I walk into a, a, you know, a, a conference for marketers that look upon the SEO godfather of SEO as, as the guru of all time, then I'm going to play that role because I'm not getting darts thrown at me and I'm not, you know, I'm not walking into a bloody pond. I'm still, positioned in clean, clear water, because there's only one godfather of SEO. So when I have the opportunity, I will take it. But you have to be a chameleon. 
And that if nothing else, if the ACT program has not taught you anything else, it should be that. You have to adapt to your audience. You have to speak their language. So I've, I've got many different presentations that position me and the products in many different ways because of that. So, but this one was built for a retail audience. This was built for a business owner that wants to boost their business and doesn't understand why they're having so much trouble. We shine a light on the problem. We show them how to overcome it. We offer to do it for them. We eliminate the objections. We make a simple, cheap offer that they can't refuse. Just like that. Pretty, pretty simple stuff. And, you know, there was probably three slides I changed out on this to do this for Gwen. The last one I did was for pool guys. So I took out the pictures of pools. I put in just, you know, some generic background muted pink picture in the first first slide. I don't even know what it was. Uh, this, I, I changed, that was a pool. That was a crystal clear infinity pool for the pool guys. So I just changed it out with a business guy on a computer, really just muted out, just a soft background. Um, I did have a faux pas in there. I skipped this picture just because I double clicked the mouse and I didn't want to go back and try and do it. We were already on, we were already on this slide, so I didn't want to backpedal. But I, I would have hit this one and just reiterated, you know, this is what the good old days look like. So we I don't see it, John. I'm not seeing your screen. Oh, oh, sorry about that. Let me let me share that. So this this was the slide that I missed. I was I was on the word of mouth. And this was this was the one I was talking about where I took the pools out and just put this guy. But this was my faux pas. This was the slide that I missed. I, I double clicked from this one to this one, and I didn't want to backpedal. But normally I would have said, you know, after talking about how you, how you talk to your neighbors and this is how referrals used to happen, you know, I said, it's, it's like the good old days. And I just would add another image of the same thing. You know, I mean, how good old guy can you get? He's holding a freaking chicken. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know, you got females, you got kids, you got birds. <laughs> and then then go into the, you know, all you have to do is do good work, which everybody sees themselves as doing good work. I think, I hope if they if they're not, I don't really have any interest in helping them do bad work and sell it. But, uh, but anyway, that's, it's kind of the, the moral of the story. You got to know who you're talking to and what makes them feel good and, and take them on an emotional roller coaster. The more emotion they experience, it's like what Perry is talking about. The more emotion you pull into your story, that was a story. It basically told a, a 30 minute story. It was a whole shitload of little little mini stories all tied together. Hopefully it came out smooth, but that's that's what it was. It was a bunch of stories without taking a lot of time on each one strewed together to either grab attention, create demand and desire, eliminate objections, and make an offer. I really don't think I went off the reins on any of that. You know, when I was showing how to do something, that's create demand and desire. When I showed proof, when I, you know, when I talked about other, you know, other things like the price, I eliminated objection on price. I talked about this being all natural without saying black hat, without bringing up a bad thing. I eliminated an objection, an unspoken objection to those that, that know about black hat. I didn't even say the word because I didn't want to bring that up to people that are not aware of it and create an objection. I only want to eliminate objections. I don't want to create more. <laughs> so, but you see how, and, it, and there was no script to that. There was zero scripts. All there was, was the slides that you saw. There's no script to that. 
That was just me talking through those slides. So it didn't, you know, it, it, if I were to read a script on that, you would have known I was reading a script. It would not have come off as genuine. Um, I, I don't think that you should read scripts. I think you should know your content good enough to, to go through it and, and just talk as though you're talking to somebody in a bar. You're just trying to help them. You're just, you know, you're letting them in on a secret. You're saying, hey, you know, if you want this, let me talk to you. Let me, you can even, you can even lean in and, you know, whisper, <laughs> you know, when you get to secrets, that stuff is really powerful. Um, but that's what you're doing. You're, you're telling them how to get what they want. You're being a friend. I, I hopefully nowhere in there did I come off like a salesperson because it was not my intent. My intent was to show them the problem that they were facing, show them how to overcome it, and then offer to help them do that. So that should be the goal. So whatever you're doing, you need to kind of figure out how are you going to walk through that process? What are the objections? What kind of stories are you going to have to tell? And, and how do you weave it together to make it smooth and and transition from one to the next that for me sometimes is the hardest part like when i start to build a presentation like this it doesn't look like this to begin with a lot of times it's just an empty powerpoint presentation and i start throwing up blank pages and i start just throwing words on them like what i want and then and then i take them into uh into the um oh what do, what do they call it the the mode where you can move them around, the edit mode, I guess, where you have all the slides up on one screen. And uh, I guess, I think it's, I think it's a review mode. Let me see if I can review, no, view. Oh, here it is, it's on view. So you go to slide sorter. And it puts them all up and then you can grab and you can you can move them around like if that one should go over there or you want to move it back over here you can drag these around so in the beginning i, I pretty much just have like words on slides of just to remind me of what i'm doing what i'm trying to accomplish like i'll put proof up there and i know okay that's got to be either a testimonial or that's got to be an actual result or something and then I'll go back and I'll find that stuff and start filling in the gaps. And then I put it into this mode and then I'll start dragging it around. And I, I do the, the dragging around probably takes me the longest because I go through it and I'm telling the story in my head as I go through the slides. And most times it's clunky. I'm like, I wouldn't say it like that. Or I, I wouldn't, you know, I'd say this first before that. And I'm moving them around. I'm just like a chessboard i'm aligning the pieces so i can get a win and you know and it changes all the time like i don't think i've ever done one of these where i didn't go in and say oh you know i'll move this over here and that over there it's it there is no perfect if you're waiting for perfect you're just going to grow old you, you got to start moving the needle it doesn't have to be perfect there was nothing about this presentation that was perfect nothing <laughs> every bit of it could have been better but is it good enough it is because it will sell if you show this presentation to the right group of people i guarantee you, you will get a conversion so is it good enough it's good enough to put some food on the table good enough for me and it gives you practice. You know, the more you do these, the more you'll be able to get better and better and better. You'll get higher and higher conversion. And then you'll have to work less and less and less. <laughs> That's very appealing to me. <laughs> so, so that that's, you know, that's how I do it. That's how I do it from beginning to end. Good stuff, John. It's, and I know it probably looks a lot easier than it is, than it is that you're, you're right on the money with that, but 
everything. There's not one thing about what I just showed you in the last hour and a half that is not covered in the ACT program that we haven't talked about over and over and over. It doesn't change. The system works. It's not perfect. It doesn't have to be perfect, but all the components are there. The more you use, the more you do it, the better you'll get, the more you'll convert, the more money you'll make. If you're doing it for other people, it's the same thing. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be up. Just get it up for them. You know, your first customer, if you, if you do this for a living and you decide, hey, I want to make marketing funnels for people, it does not have to be perfect, the first one. And it's not going to be. Your last one won't be perfect. But it'll be good enough. It'll make them money. They'll be happy. They'll pay you. You'll be happy. Everybody's going to be happy if you just move your feet. That's, that's all it really takes. You have to act. <laughs> you don't have to just have act. You have to act too. <laughs> Here's something I can guarantee everybody. If you don't do anything different, nothing will change. Except the world around you. It's going to get worse. <laughs> So, all right. Any last questions, requests? John, I'm still waiting for my first rough draft on that website. Is that going to show up? You last I, week you said it'd be in that couple of days, and it I, still isn't here. I emailed it to you. What today? No, that was yesterday, I think. Okay, well, if it's late in the day, I may have missed it. I had it was out in the afternoon. I'll go back and check. Thanks. Okay, if you didn't get it, uh, send me another email. I'll send it again. Of course you will. Thank you, John. Uh, you should have got it yesterday. All right, guys. Uh, any anything else before we wrap up? John, when is our next um, crypto group? Oh, when do you guys want it? <laughs> I was. I was thinking about doing one today and then I got another thing scheduled, but oh. uh, we could probably do one next week if you want. Okay. Yeah. John, yeah. I'm interested in the crypto book. What's the crypto group? <laughs> <laughs> You're the one that got me started on this anyway, for heaven's sakes. <laughs> oh, it's, it's just another program I put together to sell or how to, how to make money with crypto using robotic trading and stuff like that different well it's kind of a mastermind group it was originally supposed to be a mastermind group um and it, it almost wound up becoming another training so you recorded all of those too didn't you john yep yep, yep. the whole things that i i cloned my dominator membership and just turned it into a crypto membership so it was pretty easy to do i created the whole membership site in about an hour and filled it up and away we went whole new business in an hour that's the power of kartra that's the power of uh replication when you've got something that works you can replicate it now you've got two things that work so well we never i never heard of that and i've been around for a long time john so where were you hiding it um i I sent out some teasers on that to find out who was interested in it. And I only sent out the invites to people that responded. I like, like that's a perfect example of, I don't, I wouldn't blast my entire database with something if I didn't know they were interested in it. So I may have missed some people, but it, I, I didn't offend a whole lot of people and just trying to jam stuff down everybody's throat. But Richard, you could join and jump in right now because it's it's really John would answer any question just like here, and it's pretty it's pretty awesome. And the big thing we all want to know is, John, is it good to dip the toes back in the water and buy, or should we still be waiting? Um, you know, it's it's gone down. It continues to go down. The way I look at this is just like I've always said. We're in, we're in such a low end of the market. This is time to acquire. 
it might go down more, you know, that it's not going to hurt you. Yeah, you're only losing pennies on, on the dollar. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's when it's penny stock to begin with. Cause you'll, you'll never time the bottom of any market. You'll never time the top of any market. So as long as you're in the bottom sector of the market, that's the time to acquire. And that's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm acquiring as much as I possibly can right now. So. And you oh, John, if you'd send out an email to me for an invite or something, I would appreciate it. Okay. Yeah, I can do that. Absolutely. All okay. right. I have a quickie question. I'm, I really want it short so we don't need a long conversation. Okay. What's the latest news? XRP. I mean, I keep hearing all kinds like the, the, within, we're within days of a court decision. XRP <laughs> is going to lose the SEC. The SEC is going to lose to XRP. The oh, battlefield no. is getting bloody and I can't find my way out. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I mean, this, this isn't really the appropriate place to discuss that, but I, I had an epiphany this morning. Okay, that's, of, that's quick, quick and short. Of what I think is happening with this SEC lawsuit. I think it's all contrived. I quick think, recap, John. What, what SEC lawsuit? Just a quick. Okay, it's it's for the XRP token, which XRP is a, it's a cryptocurrency. And it's one that has been attacked by the SEC back in 2020 and removed off of the market so Americans can't buy it. You can't buy it on any of the U.S. exchanges except for Uphold. Uphold still allows U.S. citizens to buy it. Um, anyway, it's been removed off the market. It's been attacked by the SEC. Its price is like down in the dumper because of all this, and the whole market has crashed to begin with. So that's kind of where the, the cryptocurrency itself is. The thing that I like about it is it's a utility token. And, and just, just in general, for you guys that are not aware or familiar with crypto or you know what it is, it's, it's technology. When you buy a crypto, you're buying a piece of technology versus when you buy a stock, you're buying a piece of a company. So that's kind of the difference. Now, these technologies, you guys probably remember Web 1.0, right? It was just static websites. Web 2.0 was interactive websites. Yeah. You know, we brought, in, nice. we brought in commerce and, you know, and a, and a bunch of different stuff like that in Web 2.0. You know, yeah, this, so this is going to be Web 3.0. This is where everything is going to be connected to the blockchain like all the data, all the ownership, uh, money, transfer of money. Like right now in, in e-commerce, we're transferring money using merchant gateways and, you know, stuff that's not really effective. Like for me, when I take credit cards, it might take me three days to get the money in the bank. With crypto, with XRP, that money is in your bank in, in a fraction of a second for almost no cost. So it eliminates a lot of costs, a lot of time, a lot of, uh, you know, cross currency issues. Like when I pay people in different countries, my, you know, a lot of my affiliates are in different countries. So, there, you know, it solves all the problems of conversion, getting the money from here to there, you know, all of that stuff. It's a better financial world that we're going to live in. If, if you think that, if you think back to the beginning of, you know, the commercialized internet, email was the first thing. People used to put a stamp on an envelope and send everything in the mail and it would get there in a week, maybe, <laughs> right? And it would cost you a, a stamp, right? Well, now they type up an email and they send it. It's free and it's there in a fraction of a second. That's how money is going to transfer, this is the next evolution. It went from mail. Next is going to be money. And XRP is the token that is most likely going to be used to transfer all that money all over the world. And no wonder they're fighting it. Yes, yes. But here's the thing. The, the U.S. dollar 
is weakening big time and it's they've unpegged it from gold they've it's now about to become unpegged from oil which that is kind of what makes us a superpower is money the u.s dollar is almost like a worldwide recognized currency if it becomes unpegged from the oil my understanding is that's going to change the game big time we're going to lose a lot of traction in our world power because of that um and again i'm not an economist i'm not a, a you know, any kind of a financial advisor or anybody, I'm just somebody that looks at and breaks algorithms. I, I look at stuff like under the hood, all the moving parts and what's happening and why and all that. And I see this as just like a big Google game that I'm really good at playing. <laughs> so I'm kind of unraveling, okay, what's going on? Why are they doing this? What's happening? What's the real truth behind this? And the, the reason they don't want U.S. citizens buying this is I think they're going to want to take it off the market. There's, there's a lot of videos now coming out about uh, the feds are going to buy the XRP back. They're going to try and reacquire it so they can own the mass majority of it. So they can again have that world power and have something that the whole world runs on like the U.S. dollar. Because I think the U.S. dollar is about to lose that capacity, so for them to to maintain that, it's it's gonna they're gonna have to replace it with something, and I think it's gonna be XRP. Again, this is just me speculating, based on you know what I'm seeing all over the place. It's the it's the most I can make sense out of a whole bunch of nonsense, but I'm pretty good at doing that. <laughs> I'm pretty pretty good at looking at all the faces and the lies and the you know the the things that are put out to hide things because uh, I've been doing that with Google now for 20 years playing that game and I can see through a lot of the a lot of the facades and I just I think that's where it's going I think that that I think that the lawsuit they're talking now about when the lawsuit uh, ends, they might cut a deal. The, the company is called Ripple that the lawsuit is against. And the technology that Ripple owns and developed was the XRP token. So I believe that what they're going to do is they're going to settle the lawsuit because the rest of the world is already on board with Ripple. The only thing holding Ripple back from being the next Amazon it is, I think it's going to be the next Amazon or the next wave of Web 3.0. And the only thing holding them back is the regulation clarity from the U.S. government that it's not a security and that it's free to do its thing. And if they don't get that, they're stuck. They're in a stalemate. If they lose the lawsuit, <clears throat> then the, the CEO of the company has clearly said, I'll just pack up my shit and leave the country because they've got, they have offices all around the world. They could easily pull out of the U S and that, in my opinion, would be very bad for the U S would be very bad for them to lose that because that could literally be like the thing that makes us a world power is to keep control of that. So I think part of their, and again, this is purely speculation on my part. I think when the, in this lawsuit, I think they're going to have a settlement offer. And I think part of the settlement is that you remove XRP off of the public market and don't allow retail investors to own it. We're going to do a buyback program. We're going to buy up anything existing and not allow it to be sold or traded. So the ones that are holding it at that point in time are literally going to be holding the only gold in the world and i think the price of it is going to go absolutely through the roof and again that's just speculation on my part i, I don't want anybody to run out and buy it because i said that um, do your research look at it there's a lot of there's tons of information about it that you can dig up but make you know make your own decision if that's right for you, but uh, <clears throat> you know, there's, there's 
prices thrown out by all kinds of people that are crazy prices. You can buy XRP right now for, I think, 33 cents. I think this morning it was 33 cents. It's, I bought a lot of it probably three years ago before the lawsuit, when it first really came out to the public. I think I bought like at 18 cents. I bought a lot of it at, at that. And then I've, I've been buying it ever since, you know, along the way, as, as much as I could pile in the wagon, I'm, I'm picking it up. <laughs> so, and it's been up as high as $3. Right before the lawsuit, it was at about a $3 price tag. And the lawsuit and the, and the crash, not just the lawsuit, but the crash and everything else to do with it has brought it down to like the 33 cent range. And, you know, in my opinion, that's when you back the truck up and load it up. <laughs> now, if you do research on this, you're going to find a lot of really interesting stuff. Like a lot of the people that are involved, people on the board of, of Ripple are, they're, they're like pawns in a big chess game. And they're moving from, from government to Ripple and back and forth. Like uh, that Rosie Rios gal, um, she's the one that's, I, I forget her official capacity in the U.S. government, but she's somewhere in the federal, uh, has to do with the money. Her name is literally on every $100 bill out there. If you look at the lower left corner, uh, you'll see her name. She signed all the bills. She's now on the board of Ripple. And the person that was on the board of Ripple that she took their place, that person is now in the Federal Reserve taking her place. So they're interchanging these people. It's, it's like the stuff that's going on, it's by design if I've ever seen a design. <laughs> these, these people know what's coming and they're all getting positioned to take advantage of it. <clears throat> and uh, I would like to be on the right side of that door or window when it closes. And that's what I'm trying to do. So that's, you know, that's in short, that's just kind of the stuff that I'm sharing in that other group to people that are really into that. Um, I know there's people, in, you know, in this that might not have a care in the world about crypto and might think it's a pyramid scam or, or whatever, you know. But again, back to, I don't want to go any further into it because I only want to, I want to follow the ACT protocol and not, do any damage <laughs> don't want to damage my list i want to respect everybody thanks um, john that was a great summary of what, what's going on it's really concise i concur it was for super just want to give everybody what they want in the right time so john you're absolutely spot on i think with that because although i've not been into crypto i have been following these government shenanigans and all this stuff since uh around 1994 95 or whatever um yeah. that what you're i think you're calling the shot absolutely right and i will do the research to find out but uh, uh that is exactly what they do and if you really understand the state of of how far up it goes and who is really really pulling the strings up at the very very top and where that really that where that top is is literally out of this world and yeah uh, and most people can't wrap their minds around it and uh but what you're saying absolutely tracks with like you said don't listen to what they say watch what they do and you're yeah. absolutely spot on with that yeah exactly <laughs> all right well let's see god we've we've run this dog out almost two hours <laughs> <laughs> Let's, <laughs> for the sake of the length of the YouTube video, let's call it quits for this week. Exactly. <laughs> All right. But, Captain has uh, a call. All ashore. But have a great week, and uh, we'll be back on next week. And who knows what we'll talk about then, but I'm sure it'll be interesting. Yeah, <laughs> have a great buddy. week, everybody. Super, John. Thanks much. Thanks, John. Bye bye. All bye -bye. ashore.